there we go. So, yeah, I, I haven't really seen the full trailer, but looking at it, it looks pretty good. You know, some of the characters look pretty cool. And this CGI looks like it's done right to me, doesn't it? Yeah, and it honestly looks like it's a mix again. It doesn't look like this is 100% CGI from a lot of the way the tones and colors are running on it. But I could be wrong. Maybe they just got a really good engine <laughs> and they're doing good work. Who knows? What I do know is uh, it looks kind of Sabrina-ish to me. Hey, that's what it kind of felt like to me as well. I think from what I'm looking at, at it, uh, at least, that it seems like it's a uh, adoption story. From what I was looking at, just looking mm -hmm. at the general context of it and all that stuff, because we had the Japanese version up with no <laughs> translation. <laughs> right. I would, yeah, because I, I couldn't find one that had uh, I the probably, English translation. It might not either. be out yet. Yeah. yeah. It might just not be out. <laughs> but still, it's cool. No, um, no, this, I'm, I'm that movie is going to be done by, Go his name, I think it's believed Goro Miyazaki. So this should be the son of Miyazaki. Um, so it should be interesting to see his um, children now take on his work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see what for they sure. come up with. I think it's always interesting to see any kind of uh, endeavor like this pass from one generation to the next. Mm -hmm. And we talked a little bit about it before the start of the cast, but one of the, uh, one of the things that I think really Sorry, just checking on something. No, sorry. Right. <laughs> like, right. I'm like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> no, uh, but I think that's, we talked about it, it's really apparent in that change from hand animated to CGI. I mean, it, it's, the new generation is almost always more willing to try new things and different things than the old generation. Mm -hmm. Now, that doesn't obviously always make anything better or worse by any means, uh, but it does, you know, have a effect on going forward and so maybe uh -huh. with this we'll see even more cgi stuff coming out of uh not uh the original miyazaki but obviously goro and he may go forward with doing more of this depending on how it's saying or they might lead to better developments in the cgi animation process i mean there's there's tons of opportunities for it for sure i have to figure out why this camera is not working <laughs> um well since we're kind of go on the anime in japan side um i did want to bring up nintendo or uh, japan uh, universal released their uh super nintendo world photos and it looks pretty awesome um that's supposed to be scheduled still to open up next year at february 4th so uh we'll see how that's gonna go but it, it looks really cool like i you really do feel like you're mario land stepping in here that's for sure um, I'm curious that some of the rides, there is like a go-kart kind of like um, ride, it looks like. Hmm. Um, it, so like a Mario go-kart or Mar Mario Kart, basically. So yeah. it looks cool, but it looks like a roller coaster kind of type deal. So I'm curious on how that's going to be. Um, and then that's about it. I haven't seen any other things about what rides are going to be there. Um, they do have a big giant uh, Bowser statue. <laughs> So it looks pretty cool. I'm excited. I actually want to go back now there just to go <laughs> check that out. But I heard they're supposed to do the same thing here as well at the Florida Universal Studio. So hmm. I may just have to wait for that one to come out. <laughs> well, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see, right? Because we'll, we're never really going to know until we go. But I'm, right. I'm excited <laughs> for it. Uh, you know, there's a lot of great stuff going on with all of... Well, there was. A lot of great stuff going on all over the world with this kind of stuff you know what i mean and uh yeah it's definitely gonna be something interesting i think to say the least like anytime something like this happens there's there's always gonna be like pushback from the community mm -hmm. uh but i also think that it just naturally paves the way forward for more stuff you know um yeah. And then on that note, I guess they're uh, revealing the Pokemon actual like replica balls, but you can't throw them. But you can't throw them. <laughs> so they're not really, they're just replicas, baby. <laughs> they look really cool, though. They look really interesting. Um, so that's going to be cool. Um, oh, and looks like Hero Academia officially um, announced their movie three movie, which is supposed to come out summer in Japan. I'm always rough on anime movies because very few times are they good in the sense that they add to the story of the anime 
Yeah, yeah. Um, I did like the first one they did. It did feel pretty cool because then we kind of got that Bakugo and um, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, uh, it starts with an M. I always forget his name. Midoriya. Midoriya. Uh, yeah, they kind of got that little bond going. I thought that was kind of cool, but they had a second movie. I don't remember there was a second one. What was the second yeah, one? they did have a second one, and you don't remember it because it wasn't very good. I uh, I ain't huh. saying it like that, but that is actually the truth. So yeah, they're uh, they're gonna have that, and then um, so we'll see how that comes out. But um, yeah. let's see. I guess we can go forward a little bit here, and then Attack on Titan today just came uh, and released. I think it's like, gonna be on Netflix. They even said, uh, probably like on let's the see. same day because they usually don't do that. But I heard that Netflix got the rights to release it today as well. Let's see. Netflix. Because if anything, I was just going to watch it on my Funimation channel. <laughs> so it says it does. Okay. Or it will. I'm not sure which. Although uh, it's tough because of the delays of everything have been happening. Like I'm seeing stuff. It's like, does it have it? It's like it do- it will have it on in October. And it's like, well, obviously not because it got pushed back. Yeah. And this uh, article has not been updated or this uh, thing. But it does I look see. like they will have it, and it's going Hulu there, which I'm surprised. You never usually get them to go to both Hulu and Netflix. And right. Really one or the other, as far as those two are concerned. Um, okay. I, once again, I really like Attack on Titan, and I've enjoyed it since back before it was an yeah. anime and was still mm-hmm. in its birthing throes. I, I probably hopped on around Chapter 70, I'd say. I try to hop on after 50 in most cases for manga and get a good uh get a good chunk yeah Yeah. one it'll tell you how good the manga will be i feel like because if Mm -hmm. you only read the first 15 or 20 that's not enough to really get the long breadth of the writer's ability right um so i don't know i've never really sat and ranked a bunch of like manga or anime which i probably should do (laughs) one day but uh attack on titan I feel like is very good, but I feel like it benefits from a lot of the same things that Game of Thrones benefited from, which was shock factor, emotional pulls, and less so from like heavy actual content story writing or uh, plot based uh, intrigue. Right. Okay. Which is not to say is bad at all, but just to say that it it relies heavily on you know this character died and you love them. <laughs> but it doesn't it doesn't matter to the story though it really doesn't matter to the story all that much that they died because they never really did anything or were useful in the first place they just you just like them they made them a likable character and when they kill them and it's the same for game of thrones they would make you like characters and then kill them off and keep characters around that you did not like to kind of make <laughs> you keep watching so that you can wait until they die <laughs> Those are some of the heavy ones. Having said that, it's still very, uh, especially in terms of animation and like art, is a very good. I love that the anime because that's another that's another one that kind of used CGI to its advantage right there. Was when they were doing you know um, all the shoot, yeah, Yeah, all that was really cool. I thought that was well done. That's what really got me into the anime as well was that. And then the other thing is with uh, as far as the technical aspects of art. The Attack on Titan probably has some of the best physiology drawing. Okay. Like the way he draws the human body is very mm-hmm. accurate and uh, not uh, over exaggerating in some parts. Yeah, over exaggerated, but I'd say once again, like even uh, in things I know, you enjoy not watching. Looking like Goku. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, who made this guy out of a rock? Like, yeah. (laughs) I see. I see what you mean, yeah. Just having the muscles in the correct spaces. You don't have 12 Mm -hmm. abs. You don't have... (laughs) You feel me? Yeah. Stuff like that. And so I feel like that's one of the other... I think it's that series. It might be another series, but I think Attack on Titan is the one that does that specifically. Um, I do like the reveals. It has some pretty good shock reveals. Yeah, I've always liked that. I thought that was always good. The the reason I don't put it very highly up there is because the reveals are never foreshadowed very well. None of the reveals are like giving you hints that you would actually know what the fuck's going on. It's just mm-hmm. you get there and it's shocking. Yes, so there's is, some yeah, which is cool. But I prefer it to be uh like 
you know, you're still very shocked, but you had all the clues to figure out what was going on on your own before that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think of some good examples of that off the top of my head, but it's not coming to me right away. <laughs> all right. Well, um, I guess I'll go on some of the other lists here. Um... Sonic 2 is going to start filming in early 2021, so we can hopefully see that one I've coming out. I've it did good enough to get a second one. Oh, yeah. they, they I, I, A lot of people ended up liking it and uh, well, did no, good I at mean, the box office. That's what I was, was curious, is I didn't know if it did well at the yeah, box office. Yeah, yeah it did pretty uh, good enough that, yeah, they were gonna uh, for sure going to do a second one. I think it was even announced right then and there when it was in theaters that weekend. It might have. Uh, I will say, i, I got to check this. Ah, oh, yeah, they're fine. I was checking to see how much they put back in to redo the CGI versus how much they box office out. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but no, it, it was definitely worth it. They made they only put in about five mil on the CGI redoing it, and they box office over three hundred million. So they easily the that could have been cut in half with the old animation. I'd say, um, and I think people probably went to watch Sonic's some people partially just because they listened and changed the shit. Yeah, that's probably a big, I, I feel yeah, like, big change. I, I'm sure not everybody, but personally, that would have been like a motivator for me to be like, yes, go watch this, because then they'll actually do it next time when we say that looks like shit. Yes. I mean, a lot of people didn't like the idea that fans could change, switch things, but, you know, it calls for it, and especially for here's, that. It really did. It's like, it looked terrible. There's no way the, you guys should have Here's the thing. Companies do focus groups for every single product they create. Yeah, they have to. You know, they have, they have to. Or they do a test audience before they exactly. do any. This is just a more advanced version of that. And once again, it works in both parties' favors. Why would you make something you know your fans aren't going to buy? Mm-hmm. Just doesn't make sense. You're wasting your fucking time and their time. Now, if it's really that big of an artistic integral, like thing then you'll say okay i don't care about the money but in the aspect of how these companies and how every company basically functions is we're here to make money why wouldn't we do a bigger better focus group like this and take their advice when we can you know what i mean it's right yeah it's, it's different if they didn't have the ability to or it was already dropped or some shit you know what i mean mm-hmm. but i think it was a good i idea to change it like you know yeah you know, feedback yeah. I, and listening i to felt it. like it was yeah I, um, I can't see how that could be dangerous obviously but yeah in some cases yeah but yeah in this in this situation it, it called for it. <laughs> um I, I wanted your opinion though on this so what, what do you think about um uh warner brothers releasing their whole movie lineup of next year to hbo max is it just to hbo max just HBO Max. It's not going to screen. It's not going. Uh, I, uh, you know, I haven't heard anything of. What yeah. Our so DC so the, and here I'll give you a list of the movies here. I saw so, the, I saw that list. I just wasn't. A, I didn't know it was going to. I didn't know if it was just going to be HBO Max or a combo release like they were doing. Kind of, supposedly doing. Yeah, one that's it, see, and I it, I, I was I should looked it up more, but from what I kept. Seeing on some the post was that it was just going to be HBO Max, and I heard yeah because AMC even came out that's the next day. The CEO very very upset of what they were doing. Sorry, I'm just reading an article. Real no, that's quick. okay. Yeah, because what I'm reading too, I, I'm not seeing anything of it going to to the box office. No, they're they're going to the okay. Theater. Yeah, they're, yeah. Here we go. They're yeah, just the they're just releasing two HBO Max streaming the same day. I see. So well, you know, and that's totally fine. But then, no, I mean, at that, there's at that point, you know, there there will be a lot of people that are like, well, I'm not gonna go to the theater. It's just no. <laughs> here's the thing and about there it is gonna be a lot of money yeah. i lost for them i do well see that. is it a money loss for them is it because yeah. the people who really lose on that is just the theaters 
They are, they'll still no, get no, no. as many no, people. Not, um, yeah, yeah, no, no. I'm not yeah, talking yeah. about the studios or anything. Sorry, I yeah, meant yeah, to yeah. say, yeah, the okay, theaters. Yeah. The theaters I could what. definitely see. Uh, and the only thing I have to say to that is step your fucking game up. Give me a reason to leave my house and go to your theater and watch a movie. Right. Which yeah. is right now just the big screen, right? That's the only that's, good that's reason. The, only thing. Yeah. the good screen and the good ass audio system, which more and more nowadays, we as regular people have at, at least something commensurate. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We may not have a you know 20 foot screen but people got 80 90 inch tvs in their living room now, dude. That's... now it's now they, they do yeah <laughs> and, and when you're only sitting six feet away relative ratio size is actually pretty much the same you know what i mean mm -hmm. so then it becomes about the other thing we used we had talked about before which was uh sorry why do we go to the movie theater and we talked about it like what would going to the movie theater and sitting six feet apart be the same experience oh yes 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 we I had remember. talked about yeah. that yeah and and so it really comes down to the why do people go to the movie theater mm -hmm. and yeah i i can't tell i haven't read the studies or, or checked i can only form generalized type uh hypotheses on that shit you know what i mean right. i can't i can't give you any examples or theories because so, i don't know the info you know it's it is you know no they i have mean to, yeah it's, it's they be... have to do what they have to do yeah the right. studios and i understand that so it is cool that they will you know for some and then i mean there is people that really just can't go to the theaters you know because yeah. it's just not safe for them and so this probably is the best bet for a lot of people who just want to stay safe and in their comfort or their home and just not go anywhere, but still get to watch some of the new stuff that will come out next year. <laughs> Absolutely. And once again, I think it's going to start heavily. I mean, not saying that I, I enjoy it or think it should go this way, but based on the way human dynamics function, at least as I've seen it, you know, we're going to continuously move towards a more stream heavy environment. Mm -hmm. uh, especially as technology, etc., starts to increase. For instance, you know, we're not necessarily all that far from being able to have VR movies. Yeah, there has been, uh, there, they have done those, a few of those uh, VR movies, and I oh, heard they're pretty awesome. They're pretty okay. They're still missing a lot of the tech necessary to make it experienceable. Right? Like, yeah. to make sure you have all the proper, but they're they're getting there. And that's the point. Have you even seen weird. the VR uh, like rides kind of? Yeah, the VR weird. rides are very, very much similar. And so the what and what I mean is to the point where you are able to stand up and walk around the movie. Mm, instead, okay. instead of you are a person sitting in the movie with your VR helmet on, you can walk around this actor while they're getting shot at or go behind <laughs> Godzilla while he's breathing fire, wherever you want. That will become a reality. You know what I mean? That's okay, yeah. there's no question. It's a question of when, but there's no question that it will become a reality. And most likely films will progress and develop in that direction, just like video games have. And so when we get to that point, it is going to be a very, very big question of why do I go to the movie theater? You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So and, we'll, we'll yeah. I mean, I, we'll see how this really goes, you know, um, I know, like I said, the AMC, the CEO came out and was very frustrated about this situation. I so, mean, but we, like you said, you know, you're, they're going to have to step their game up. Right. And you're not. I, and I, I keep trying to uh, not you, but I keep trying to tell people this: like your business doesn't have a right to exist. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we keep bailing out whatever and we won't talk about the politics of it. But in the general sense, your business in capitalism does not have the right to exist. We shouldn't have to go watch your movies or whatever it's your thing. That's not the way it's supposed to be. That's just the way it is right now. You have to keep bringing people in much in the same way as every other medium, such as newspaper, etc., has had to change with the times. Mm -hmm. It's not like it's. Uh, what's it like garbage or something like no matter what changes, garbage has to go out. <laughs> and it's it's never going out of style, you know what I mean? Uh, as opposed to like movie theaters are very much just a product of the times. And so I, mm -hmm. I, I think actually that they're important in a social context of movies. Like 
I think it is important to watch movies with people, with other people and even groups of people from time to time. That's, yes. That's really where film started. And so there mm-hmm. is a dynamic about it. However, you're going to have to sell people on that dynamic and really, yeah. really get yeah. into it. I mean, I know they were trying to do that already with like their, because they were building, um, AMC started building like more high end mm-hmm. um, theaters where they were like kind of like, almost had the chairs shaking at one point because the bass was just so like right loud. <laughs> like loud that's well, so far have you ever it. been to a 4d movie yeah i think that's what some they were trying to do okay, it was yeah. like kind of like a 4d experience is what they were trying to say yeah and so they um, used to have them at like i can't remember like disneyland or elitches or somewhere i don't know some oh yeah because yeah they used to do the oh yeah they like the push honey, air I shrunk, I in your yeah, face where there was and... this one where they had the rats crawling and then they had the air come and then you're like oh my, there's like rats under my feet <laughs> yeah which yeah. is good that and that is something now obviously those weren't commercially viable for a variety of reasons yeah but the point is that there did something else and even to uh put another example that's not even movie based but just something else that uh and a couple ideas i'll throw out uh one that's already in existence is places like uh the alamo Okay. Alamo yeah. Roadhouse and Grill. It's combining and eating experience. Yeah, that that is a good yeah, good example. I I do like going to the Alamo and I and it's it. not like cheap, you know, uh, concession stand food. It's actual like grilled food that they're yeah. making and stuff and so And, and I the think, funny yeah. thing is I actually don't even really like the food at Alamo that much. Like <laughs> personally like they a lot of their recipes are either like heavy for me or I just different tastes that I'm not a particular mm-hmm. fan of. But the experience of eating there and ordering with people and buying a shake, a themed shake to the movie, right? <laughs> You're right, yeah. It's the little extra things count. And that's why I think places like Alamo are doing better than AMC right now. Uh, yeah, they uh, do also um, like events too, like when they had Jaws happening, all the people are dressed up as like, you yeah, know, beachgoers yeah. and they do all sharks. Kinds of shit. <laughs> and so that's one that's currently in existence, right? Mm-hmm. Cool. But. You know, let's throw some out there. What if they did a movie dating place or something? You, yeah. You go on a date. They set up a blind date with someone based on the movie you want to watch. That's just that, an yeah. idea. Right? Like <laughs> right. It's no better or worse than the current plan they have, which is going down the toilet, unfortunately. And once again, do I think movies are at any time soon going away? Not notwithstanding this coronavirus stuff. No, mm-hmm. but it's something that's in the future that we have to consider as a medium and as a culture of people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It, very much in the same way that plays still exist, right? Like, yeah. Like, plays are still pop. Movies will remain. They just might not be the, you know, and even movies. Movies were, right, the main way we consumed entertainment at one time, and then it became television even uh television is starting to phase out. right they're getting phased out well and even then i guess you could say radio there's you know there are levels to the different mediums we absorb and like put into ourselves but you know there there mm-hmm. will be a time where it's no longer the main medium most like most likely you know what i mean uh and so i think that right. amc really needs to start looking forward i think big companies are so stuck looking at the bottom line that they don't look forward Mm -hmm. which is silly because that's how you keep the bottom line is by looking forward but beyond that i mean and obviously not to to say oh amc is a bad business or whatever because they're just being really heavily affected by the coronavirus Mm -hmm. currently but even before that the, the movie scene was kind of on a downtrend it, it was that's what i yeah there was already talks about it before even all this happened mm-hmm. so yep um yeah and so i think it's just something that like as much as i feel bad for amc and the other theaters this is something they needed to see coming this is this is like you know pushing a door forward and not expecting it to come back and hit you in the face right um so, all right, well, then let's see here what else. Uh, so you haven't watched Selena then, huh, on Netflix? Not yet, no. What did it come okay. out? Like I a couple days out. ago, right? Um, yeah, I talked about a few days ago. Um, I guess there's been mixed reviews about it. I enjoyed it. You know, it was cool. Um, the girl who played, um, if you've watched Walking Dead, uh, 
Rosita. Okay. Yeah, she's <laughs> playing Selena in this one. And uh I thought it was cool. You know, I thought costume design was awesome. You know, they she's she got the the eighties kinda down. They were all dressed up like eighties all the time and uh the music soundtrack was pretty cool. They were always busting out eighties um music and it was pretty cool. So I thought it that was awesome. And then it kinda, you know, goes goes a little deeper since it is a show. They don't have to, you know, they're not constrained to that hour and thirty minutes of right. trying to wrap all her life in that, that much so they kind of go explore a little bit with her siblings as well and kind of how they were feeling what they were going through as well while this is all happening so um it, it was yeah it was good a uh, little watch to just kind of see those little things as well in there um it is going to be longer that's for sure because they uh I, I already knew as soon as i seen part one i was like okay well they're gonna they're gonna be doing this longer than just a, a limited series so for sure, I don't know if they're gonna do a, like a third part, or is it just gonna be one, two, and then done? Um, well, there's we'll obvious. It's obviously gonna end. Yeah, no, it will. Yeah, but, but I, I just don't know how how long they want to go for to kind yeah. of put all her life in. So, uh, I could, I feel like it will end in the second part because they're kind of at the part where now they've um, done the fan club and they've uh, hired that. Um, I always forget her name. Oh, uh, what's her the name? One. Yeah. Um, Gloria, I think was like, yeah. Anyway, nobody yeah. cares what her name is. <laughs> so yeah, they that's where they're at right now, and it kind of ended almost around that that kind of part, and then they found out that um, you know, Selena and him were dating, and so that kind of ended just right there. So again, I feel like it could end in the, just on the next part, and then that's about it. But yeah, yeah, I thought it was cool. So check it out whenever you can. Um, I'll, I'll give it a look. If you're my, a Selena's fan, <laughs> I'm, I'm definitely a Selena's fan. My biggest problem, and even with the old Selena's, is they never get. And it's it's a challenge, all right. I'm not being super critical, but they never get a woman who's as as who is as beautiful as Selena was. It's hard. Yeah, you can't find yeah. someone who's that beautiful and that good at acting and looks like Selena. Mm-hmm. They tried with J Lo yeah. and they got close. It was close. I it thought J Lo right. was a pretty good. She's, she was pretty good. She's pretty good, she, but she's she was, she's no Selena. She sing, then, yeah, <laughs> but um. Other than that, I thought it was cool. Check it out whenever. Um, I think that was that was new on there. What else did we watch that was new? Um, I feel like there was something else on Netflix that was on there. Oh, Big Mouth came out. Oh, I did weekend. see that. I still haven't watched the last thing. I, I did. Yeah, I feel that way about a lot of the newer ones. Oh, oops, oops, not what I want to happen there. A lot of the newer ones, I feel like the first season is really, really good, and then after that, it kind of just slowly falls off. And I just lose interest pretty hard and pretty oh, fast. The okay. same was with actually Rick and Morty. Like I oh. like Rick and Morty and I like science and science comedy, but the first season of Rick and Morty for me is way better. I actually just watched season four not too long ago and I was, eh, it was all right. It was, it was, <laughs> it was good and it was Rick and Morty, but it wasn't first season, second season Rick and Morty for me. Like, okay. Okay. And in similar aspects, I feel like the, and I think maybe I did start season three or maybe got like halfway through. Maybe I did watch season three of Big Mouth and I just don't remember. Mm, yeah, maybe. <laughs> but I, they, I've uh, actually, yeah. I've it, been, yeah, I mean, it's, it's pretty good. The second one was they, they add on like different, um, well, they added on a new um, kind of like subconscious feeling and it was the uh, anxiety mosquito now. <laughs> I just had seen uh, that one from like the trailers. Oh, okay, you did? Okay. Yeah, because the trailers play, you know, when you hit Netflix or whatever, and that was one of the first ones, and it's, I think it was just like, tell them you know this shit! Or something. <laughs> I, I definitely know this. What would you show us? Some, some shit like that. Anyway, uh, I mean, it looks good, and it is, it's still a good show. It's just, like I said, and I, I think it may be yeah. even more to do with me than, God damn it than the shows because it's been a typical thing lately for me that i get into a show i really like it for the first season or two and then i just kind of like yeah. don't 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 like it as much i still enjoy right. it and it's still good and i still watch it most of the time but like <laughs> i'm trying to think of a couple examples besides those but it was like uh big mouth was one uh stranger things was another Oh, I'm still a big fan of Stranger Things. Yeah, I love me. I, I, it was, I, it you was know, cool, you know what I love about the... Stranger Things though is just like I love anything '80s, and um, I always tell my tell everyone, I'm like, I feel like I should have been born in that era. <laughs> See, my my mother is an '80s girl, so 
I grew up listening to a ton of 80s, and she has all the 80s stuff, and I, wa- I, I watch like 80s the 80s whenever I can. But yeah. it's, I, I saw so much 80s coming up that it's just, like, regular for me. Like, I see, the 80s yeah. is just another era that I've experienced because I watched a ton of 80s movies. I listened to a ton of 80s music. Uh, I'm trying to think of some of my favorite ones that I can think of, but... Um, let's see. Uh, Pretty in Pink. I watch. I watch. I always watch Breakfast Club. I watch. Oh, yeah. I got Breakfast, the original. Breakfast was uh, like a classic, though. That one I wouldn't even call an eighties Fer- movie. Uh, Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Um, there's this one I can't remember. Is it Monster in the Closet or? There's this uh, Better Off Dead is one of my Pretty favorite good. ones with John Cusack. That is the one I'm thinking of. Monster in the Closet. That one sounds familiar. It's just a silly old. Uh, horror movie that's not even very scary <laughs> but there's there's a bunch of them back there there's that one there's <sighs> never remember real monsters Is that it oh no that mine died. animation yeah mine went through it's all good i had the same thing happen on my end for the cam there same we go equipment. anyways um so let's see. I, I forgot to go. There was a few other little things I was going to say here. Um, oh, so I didn't. I guess I, I heard this is going to happen, but I didn't know for sure. But yeah, they're going to do the Game of Thrones prequel series. Yeah, I'm not sure if I feel all that about that. I've but... never really cared for the Game of Thrones, anyways. I've never watched a single episode, <laughs> but uh, I just I know there's a lot of fans out there for it. But I heard very, uh, people are very. I actually did watch the last episode because my mother was watching. I was like, well, let me just see this, and I was like, yeah, I'd be very disappointed with that ending too. <laughs> so yeah, they're gonna do that. And what else here? Um, I have Game of Thrones is another example of that actually, where I liked it more at the beginning than the end. But I think everybody felt that way. Right. Yeah, that one was a huge disappointment I heard to a lot of fans. I also didn't like the um, uh, show as much as the books, but that's pretty much typical for me. So, too. so what do you think about uh, Metal Gear Solid movie happening? Uh, I was all right, except for maybe the casting choice. I saw the a casting lot of people choice. love it. I guess I don't know. I, people I, are loving it's it. It's like I've seen pretty much half and half. Either people like it or they don't like it. I just didn't see it. I was like, I guess whatever. You can make anyone anyone. I just don't see the resemblance. <laughs> Man, I, i'm sure he'll make you know, a great snake i was just like i have whatever and it's not I like never i never really got into the metal gear solid stuff anyway so yeah we'll see how I, even if i care for this movie i'm curious I, if I'm they're gonna the same, go all like, out for it i played maybe the first two metal gear solids yeah I probably and did not too. i played heavily. the one i think on the 64 yeah that's the one i remember playing and then i played another one i think that was on playstation 2 Maybe it was Xbox One, but okay. I, I didn't even own it. I played it on somebody else's shit, and so it was never big. I do know the character of Snake from his various appearances all over the world. At you know, at basic points, he's got, I can't remember if they put him in Smash or not. Yeah, I think he's been in Smash a couple yeah. times as well. And so um, he's. It's like I know about him, but I don't much care. Like I said, I I that was my only real thing. Was was like, so this is the guy they got playing him. It don't really look like him. Okay, whatever. That was, that was my entire thought process of it. It was like, I don't care enough to care who's playing <laughs> this guy. Like, if he plays him well, awesome, I'll watch it. If he plays him like shit, cool, I won't watch it. Right. Like, you know right. what I mean? If it's a good movie, I'll watch it. If it's a bad movie, I probably will still watch it and talk shit, actually. So, comics, what did you read so far? Shit, I think I've read almost everything this fucking week, dude. Not everything, everything, but everything so from the main show. So what you think of King and Black so far? Um, My only it was problem... Good. It was good. You know, I did like, you know... I had two so problems. That... One, yeah, let's see. One was uh, the Sentry connection to Void. Not even the fact that uh, Noel rips him to pieces or whatever. I'm cool with that. Mm-hmm. But the connection with Void doesn't feel very good to me as opposed to some of the other connections that they've drawn to null Mm -hmm. uh because void's power set has already outstripped nulls on several occasions 
Like he has matter manipulation, instant like the the shit that the void has been shown to do, as well as the things and places he's alluded to be like uh -huh. pushed from, don't match up with the symbiote set. Okay. That's my only issue. Now there are some really like cool things, obviously, about the darkness, the void, I am the darkness the void. And obviously that's all gonna connect back up with Black Winter. Or as he, well. call, he says the abyss, right? As so he keeps calling himself. Uh, he does, but in that particular panel he says I oh, am okay. the void. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or I, I, I yeah, control yeah. the void, whatever. Which is once again, that was at least a half decent connection, but it kind of mm -hmm. ruined it for me with the fact that I know too much about the century in the void yeah i feel like he should be more than okay yeah i just feel like um, it needs I'm, a I feel better like there's gonna be more with that for sure though maybe oh, there'll sure. be uh maybe it'll seen, be something that have you seen the scans that and it's gonna come back at him have you seen the scans of century uh as golden just century yet well that's that's what uh the, there was a lot of speculation yeah. going on with that and, a lot of people uh, are going ghost or they were saying he was the god of light or something i can't remember that's what they were saying you know the fucked up part about this is if it goes that way i wrote a screenplay like this like two years ago <laughs> i have the notes on my computer where it's like yeah the century and the void were both originally one piece of an older cosmic being like the final firmament some shit okay. like that i had it written out That'd but if it cool. goes i actually would really like that because then you can kind of bridge that gap, right? Like all the things the void could do that Noel doesn't came from mm -hmm. Robert Reynolds, as opposed mm -hmm. to just being the void. Now I'd be all right with that. The other thing is, I actually thought the scene where he ripped him in half looked like shit. It, I didn't think it was, it was drawn cool. very. I well. thought it was a fun homage, though. It, it was a cool <laughs> homage, but it looked bad. Like it didn't. The art wasn't good. I wanted it to be. Like you got like one of Sentry's arms over here. Like, yeah, I, I, I think could it was pull kind of weird because it was it was like the void like all popping out of him like all. It, it just it didn't look very good artistically in my opinion. Besides that, I love the whole thing. Yeah, That's it's cool. Good. Uh, the cool draws into Black Winter are all set up. Yeah, he says he's not done with that character. Uh, I'm pretty sure, sure it's just no it collected. Because the he they talk about it already that Noel's been extinguishing stars on his way over. Yeah, yeah. And the um, way they kind of talk about it, the Black Winter, the darkness, the Star Plague. Mm -hmm. The the I'm curious way where that's going to go as well. The way yeah. that symbiotes are usually supposed to be weak to fire, aka the sun, nuclear fission, whatever mm -hmm. you want to call it, or sonic frequencies, or right. Which is that one? I, I'm still waiting for something to kind of. Right, the light, sun, fire, and darkness makes sense. Still no real explanation on why sound worked at all. We'll get there. I trust that Donny Cates is a good enough writer to tie up these ends that are bothering me. <laughs> that's um, and that's all I'm waiting for the ties so up for loose ends. They are gonna have a little mini series for for sure, because on the for Century, we're sure gonna see him again. He's gonna be in uh, the Valkyrie tie in. Yeah, we already, like I said, they had released we, that, which we they shouldn't seen, have uh, done. Yeah, we've seen they his picture in there. That, but they always do. I never understand why they do that. Why tease peek at things like that that are actual reveals? Right. And I mean, obviously, right. it's this time at work because they're building intrigue. It's all over the message boards and shit. Mm hmm. No, people, yeah, pay attention a lot more, yeah, since the internet. <laughs> like, did you sure. see that? Did you like the, um, the Electra stuff? The, uh, did you read the new Daredevil for. I still have Electra. to catch up on the new Daredevil. I probably won't have to catch up. I think this is going to be one of like the best runs for Daredevil. I've in a heard while. a lot of good stuff. Uh, I mean, it's been pretty good since the whole Daredevil killing someone on accident thing or whatever. I love that whole concept. I really no, thought it was, it was really was good. Cool. Yeah, um, it was real good. It was really, yeah. It's, I will so, say it's... I, I have, yeah, that's where I stopped, though, was with the war with um, Cole, uh, Cole the... North. I forget his name. Yeah, yeah. The, the police officer. But anyways, uh, that's the that that was the last arc I had read. And then I guess it goes into where oh, he Oh, yeah, then me and you jail. are the same part. Yeah, he, it's where he goes into jail now next. Yeah, so I still have to catch up on that. I'm already, I think actually I've already seen him partially in jail. Uh, yeah, so I don't think good. I've read that part yeah, yet. Yeah, check it out. But, the, uh, the jail stuff starts out pretty good. Okay. Uh, I yeah, haven't I gotten like into the today. deep ends of it. That It's looking to be a really good thing. Uh, I will also say, uh, we thought those Marvel snapshots were, or not these ones, not the Marvel snapshots, but the Marvel tales. Mm -hmm. I think it was one of those two we thought were compilations and they're not. One of them is and one of them isn't. 
Because I know the Marvel Tales are just some of them are like reprints. Like I know they did yeah, the, the Null Tales one. are reprints. I'm checking this one, but the snapshots are not. No, yeah, snapshots are actually um, they're new stories that... from old arcs. Yeah, yeah, because uh, Alex Ross wanted uh, came up with the idea that he wanted to kind of explore that mar like his when he did the Marvel thing he wanted to explore that a little bit more deeper so he yeah came up with these snapshot books here and then he came up with another one now he so he did marvel x right and then he yeah. then then he read got rid of and did again the marvel snapshots and then he came out with another one just called marvels i think uh, i think it's just, just marvel not marvels i think it's is it called marvel okay i think because i have been reading that one it's interesting um I can't remember if that one is a collection, a partial collection, though. But yeah, I, I, was I can't reading, yeah, I know the snapshots are pretty um, cool. Cause, yeah, uh, the snapshots those are, are Yeah, those are nice. I well, like it's those just ones. nice to get new views of old content, because you're never really yeah. going to get that again. Uh, so I actually think I pretty much read fucking every single thing on the list this week, except for three things. I read Atlantis Attack, oh, Marvel List. I read Atlantis Attacks, Black Widow, Snapshots, uh... Hellions, King in Black, Null, Marvel Tales, Modoc Head Games, which is actually pretty decent. You uh, liked it, huh? Okay. Yeah, was, uh, I'm actually. Oh, uh, super they came out with the Modoc. Uh, they're coming out with a six inch figure for him. Well, yeah, Marvel he's Legend getting that Hasbro. animated series. Yeah, and he's getting that. But you know who's doing his voice, right? Patton Oswald, yeah. Yeah. I, I didn't know he was Patton such a big comic voice. fan. I actually did because he's an agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah, see, I never, I never knew that until I seen him uh, yep. tweet up a lot. And people always retweet his stuff on the I comic uh, groups. I, and I was like, oh wow, well, yeah, did not know he was comic guy. <laughs> he is, and 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 for the people who are like, oh, what do you have against Pat Oswald? My only thing I have against Pat Oswald is the only time he voice acts is his fucking voice. That's my issue yeah. with Pat Oswald. Yeah. I mean, he does Bob's Burgers, and it's just Pat Oswald. Every doing, voice. Uh, position he does is just fucking Pat Oswald. He he does have some jokes in them Bob's Burgers where like it catches me. I'm like, oh, that was kind of good. I mean, that, I'll give you that funny. one, Pat. I'll give you that he's one. Funny. But... <laughs> I just get irritated that every time I hear him voice a character, oh, yeah. it's I see what you fucking mean, yeah. Pat Oswald's voice. And I know he's a better an actor than that. And I know if he's a comic fan, he's made fake voices before. That's that's why I never got into Keanu Reeves too much either. Just because, again, he just plays, I always say, the one from The Matrix. It's not even that. He just <laughs> the plays only Keanu time Reeves. I thought he really did good was, um, he does play a different character when he did Bill and Ted. But then his other one was when he did John Wick. That was the only time I'm like, John okay. Wick is still just him. Almost, but he did kind of play almost the, a, a more badass. So I was like, okay, I'll give you this one. The Keanu. only <laughs> thing, difference between John Wick, Keanu Reeve, and the one Keanu Reeve is he talks less. That's probably what it is. Just it's more of just him talking less and him just doing more. And badass to be stuff. fair, you know who else <laughs> does the same shit? Samuel L. Jackson. Yeah, he does. Samuel L. Jackson never plays anybody. He just plays Samuel L. Jackson as. And, no and, they, they, and, they, and look, it was so they it was so bad that in the comics they wrote them in like that. <laughs> they're like, oh, we'll put Samuel, but then and they're like, oh, well, we'll get Samuel to do our movies now as well. <laughs> and to be fair, certain people like Samuel L. Jackson and to an extent Keanu Reeves are that do. charismatic that they can do that. Yeah, no, there, there, there's a. I do like you know their characters and who crazy. they are, and it's cool. It's fine with me. Oh but... yeah, yeah. But to to people who are like they're great actors, yeah. you got to act to be an actor. You got to pretend to be yeah. somebody else to yes. do a different, diverse set of emotions that are not relative to your own. Yes. At least so... in my opinion. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I was I was trying to catch up on some books. I did read a couple of things uh, for sure. I was reading the um, the. What was I reading here over here? Stranger uh, or Champions. I finally got caught up on some of that issue too. I, I've been kind of liking some of the Champion stuff, but they're doing like kind of like the Civil War thing with this whole uh, teen kind of uh, enactment. No teens can be superheroes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because it was, it was, the, and they call it the Kamala Law. <laughs> and she doesn't like it. She's like, can we not please call it that? <laughs> uh, what happened is uh, it, almost like the Civil War, like a school, um, they were they were all there and they were supposed to protect the kids. And I, I don't remember if the kids died. I don't think the kids died. I think just 
Viv, uh, Viv Vision died. They thought she did, but she's ended up still being alive. She's a machine. She can't die. Yeah. And so anyways, the whole, I think, building of the school was destroyed and everything. And so because of that, they enacted a new law that was Kamala's law. And um, I guess the law is just like no more uh, teen vigilantes anymore. Um, and I don't even think you can be like, even like, be, you know, trained or anything. It's just they don't want no, no right. teens at all. <laughs> no, and I mean, to be fair, they actually probably have a good point. But... The, it's just interesting to see it come back again like this and it's always going to come back like that kind of power versus control argument but mm-hmm. we've seen it a lot i do think it's interesting to see it from that perspective perspective the yeah so that was just cool to see it in a different way than yeah than it the grown-ups seem to, be a lot of <laughs> to see how they handle it I'm, <laughs> the grown-ups I'm, I'm looking through Don't. some of the other releases this week and i'm not seeing as much as i've been seeing in recent weeks so like you got Betty Page, Red Sanja, The Boys, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Best of Raphael, Jenica 2, Sonic have the you been reading the, Have you been reading the Turtle stuff? No, because I got to catch up. So I got to get like, I, all I, You know, it was, I heard it was really good run when it first started. But uh, I guess it's a new team, though, that started on issue huh. 100, though. Oh, actually, this might be worth a check out. I haven't checked out Stranger Things D&D crossover. Yeah, yeah, they got that out. Yep. Uh, Hellboy um, has some... Did- Classes. Did you read the Rick and Morty D and D stuff? Uh, which one? They got like three of them. Yeah, I thought they only did two. It's two or three. Let's see. Uh, Rick and Morty D and D comic. Oop. All right. Let's see what they got. Did Amazing Spider-Man come out this week? No, you had Miles Morales Spider-Man, I believe. I was going to say, I think my thing has it all wrong on here. I hate when it does it wrong. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to see what else came out, too, as well. I did read the new... I'm, or Yeah, I'm, I read the Phantom already. I'm having trouble old. finding it because I'm currently finding the actual D&D Rick and Morty bundle for the RPG. <laughs> Um, I didn't get to read the new Thor yet. Did you like that issue number ten? Eh, I mean, I liked it a little bit uh better in this issue because it explains some of the stuff that I was unhappy about last issue, like how he kind of got the power, or yeah, exactly. Like, is why is he so goddamn strong for no reason? Yeah, yeah, that is true. For no um, reason. Uh, but they explained it. I will say it's still a little iffy on half and halves of it, but it's okay. nothing that hasn't been done by another comic company. So, <laughs> right. yeah. So as long um, as it's not unprecedented and non and nonsensical, then I don't care. It can't be okay. both, but okay. it has to. It can be one, just not both. I if see. If you're gonna be full of nonsense, you better have some former examples to look back to. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it was good. Um. I feel there's a lot of problems right now, especially with Donny Cates, unfortunately, on power in the Marvel Universe. Like the scaling level, uh, depiction, and kind of overall levels of power are not in a good spot in Marvel right now. Okay. Um, he, he's just playing too fast and loose with constants that we've had for years. Which is fine, but then there's also like these little things that are really harsh in the vibe for it. Like, you know, Thor blows a hole in Galactus's chest and then gets knocked down by a rock. Right. Yeah, and I know you were said you weren't you, you said that just can you know, you weren't feeling that one. There's a couple little things like that where it's just like, look. You should I, follow his Twitter. Um, I, which is, there's a lot of people that are always like, you know, same thing, kind of like, I don't like that. Or it didn't I, like that. I just, I don't feel that like that was, yeah, should be good for the writing or something. Like there's always people writing and he always tries to explain things. I, I think you would like to go on I, there and see. I'd love to talk to him. Well. But it, I'd love to talk with him and figure out his mind state, but it doesn't change the fact that the product he put out didn't explain it. Yeah, If it's not covered in the piece, it's kind of what I say to people where it's like author statements don't mean shit because they're not writing the book anymore. And even if they are, they wrote the book and put it down until they write another book. It's all just hearsay. It's kind of like right. writing in its stone. 
Uh, for mm-hmm. in, for instance, the uh, the World Forger thing from Superman. I don't know if you'd heard about that that shit, but where he had destroyed a multiverse with his punch. I think I was hearing some of those things. Yeah. Yeah. That, and, was, that was Bendis doing that, right? Uh, no, it was some. I don't know. It was somebody else. It was okay. Like, yeah, some some bull. Whoever was doing Justice League at the time was doing that, which maybe it was Bendis, but I don't think it was. <laughs> and people were. That was the start of all this Dark Knight bullshit, and it's, it's not very good. I, I, <laughs> as much as I'm criticizing Marvel's current state of power fluctuation, DC is by far ten times worse. Worse right now? Okay. Way worse. And and to be fair, their overall power structure is worse, in my opinion, like the whole way it's structured out. For mm-hmm. instance, they constantly cite the source or the presence as the highest level of being in their universe, right? Their multiverse. Okay. But he himself says he's not. Hmm. Okay, yeah. Which already makes him weaker than the one above all, by definition, and thus pulls their whole power scaling down a notch. And that's even before you getting to all the confusing shit with Perpetua and the monitors and crap. Mm-hmm. Like the especially what they've done recently, having the uh World Forger affect things like the dreaming and shit like that is just so bonkers fucking up their power scale. I cannot tell you how stupid it is. And yet there's still people out here just like, ah no, they're good. It's all good, it all makes sense. It does not all make sense. <laughs> it barely makes sense. And I keep feeling like they're hitting with these really good concepts and falling short for okay, example okay. like i i don't know if you checked it out yet and you should anyways if you're a batman fan but the three jokers just did not live up to the hype. i still need to i still need to read, read it bro. read I have, it and give me I an did. opinion because i've heard both ends of it and i can't i, I can't say because i you know it's a it's a subjective piece of artwork Everyone's gonna feel yeah. different. Like I, I gotta get more opinions on it and reasons for those opinions. I'll have to read it. Yeah, I mean the guy who's a, there's a huge Batman fan guy at the comic store, and I mean he says he loves it, but I, you know, I gotta, I gotta so go read it myself too thing, as well. I think, and, and it, it's funny because I don't consider myself a huge Batman fan, which is probably why I don't. I think any really, really big Batman fan would like it because it has a bunch of. Uh, like I've heard a kind of nit- not nitpicks, but like it, yeah, references from yeah. old things, which is That's cool. But that doesn't make a good story. It's it's like uh, what was it's like the Star Wars trilogy from this trilogy. They they yeah. kept putting out. I didn't we I, did we talk about that last week or was that I think so? Else? Yeah, yeah. Where we, did, where we yeah, talked about bit. them relying on the nostalgia factor. Yeah, yeah. That's what Three Jokers does. Okay. So if you're cool with just relying on the nostalgia factor instead of something like an interesting story that adds to the Batman mythos and improves mm-hmm. it, then it's a great book. I'm just not interested. Ball is, ball is, like you. Okay. We're pretty much around time, too. Yeah, yeah. It looks like I got to start hitting. Yeah, it is that time, too. Are we hitting up to that hour, huh? <laughs> yeah, we, we were on a roll today. There was a lot Sounds of Sounds good. Content. Perfect. Uh, and well, we'll have more great stuff next week, too. We've got yeah, more yeah, comics coming. Got more King, stuff of, coming out. King in Black is going to keep rolling out. I can't wait to yeah, see. Yeah. This is both a big opportunity and a dangerous point for Marvel in that sense. But I think Nola is one of the most interesting characters that they've made in a long time. I feel like he is, yeah. I, I still feel like he hasn't been utilized correctly, unfortunately, in my opinion. But I'm hoping that this event we'll changes see. that. Yeah. We'll have to see where he kind of is on the. To be fair, this is like of... really the first time he showed up. So, here, technically, you know what I mean? Yeah, technically, technically, yeah, because those other times he wasn't really there. He yeah, was, it was just all just symbiotic himself. Yeah. <laughs> Which is super confusing and might have not been the well, best. Well, that's, that's kind of like, you know, I, no, have I, mean, to kinda, in, I wanted in, to read some of it again because I was like, wait a minute, I'm, I am a little confused. Wait. Uh, yeah, some it's like parts. I thought he was here, but he's not. He's like manifesting through the head of the dragon at one point and yeah. then. Then he's a collection of the Carnage symbiotes or something, mm-hmm. which yeah. is it's cool. I like I like it. It just sometimes that's a bit confusing, right? Uh, right. But I'm excited for it, and uh, like I said, we won't keep you too long. I will say another thing you should check out from DC should you get the chance. Every one of them so far I've enjoyed are the Tales from the Dark Multiverse. 
and uh, okay, that's the, the the one they did was the swamp thing one, right? They've was done the a first bunch. One? Uh, I don't know the first yeah. one. They've done a bunch of them now. No, but the last seven. one they just did. Right? No, the, the last one, one they right? did was Wonder Woman. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, they did uh, oh. Tales from the Dark Multiverse, Wonder Woman, War of the Gods, and so basically what they are is they take a major DC event. They're basically what if stories for DC, just under okay, another cool. title. They're Else Worlds, but only from the dark multiverse i guess i don't know i don't know why they needed to make up a whole new brand for their else worlds but they decided to and it's good i like it i, okay, I wish I'll marvel would out. do more like this still it's a good concept that they just abandon all the time and i have no idea why yeah. what ifs are always popular yeah they did do uh they did some last they was did, that, but they they've but they not cool. been. It was alright. Hey, my favorite like, one was DC's just the. Doing it better right if now, with for Peter sure. Parker's Punisher one. I like the one where it was. Uh, what if uh, Eddie Brock killed Peter Parker? Oh, that was a good one. Yeah, I do yeah, remember that one. There were a couple. One. There were a couple really good. Most of the what ifs are good. Like yeah. there's a couple that aren't, and the older ones are a little rougher to read. But right. most of the what ifs are fire, and I never understand why they don't capitalize on them a little bit more, even as well, just a randomly recurring series. I really can't wait till they do the animated what if stuff. Oh, oh Marvel so, Zombies the is going to be something they're was, doing. And that was one of the reasons they were so great, was just because it was, yeah, man, like, what if? And it's right. like, and well, I, that's one thing I will say DC comic wise is doing better than Marvel right now is that those what ifs are on point. Those Tales of the Dark Multiverse are nice. I've liked every single one of them I've read so far. Uh, even the ones that involve stories that I have not read, such as this one, War of the Gods. I haven't read the original War of the Gods storyline and mm -hmm. I still enjoy this. So, All right. Yeah. Well, sounds good. Well, we'll probably have to end it there. But yep. uh, yeah, I think that was a good talk. Hell yeah, man. Uh, and hopefully everyone will be ready. I think next week we're making some switches on our... We got a new intro coming. It would have been done today, but my Blender render didn't go right. <laughs> it keeps rendering zero seconds for no reason. Uh, <laughs> but uh, next week we'll be doing that, and I think we might be switching broadcast mediums because we're going to be consolidating more onto YouTube to try to okay. keep our viewer base uh, more interactive, basically, because we're getting a lot more interaction and stuff on youtube nowadays oh are we, we okay yeah. okay we, that we might get, be the better platform right now we, we get a couple new subscribers or yeah probably a couple new subscribers a week and then you know a couple comp com that com that 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 comments a day some shit like that <laughs> okay sounds good maybe we yeah we'll check that out hell yeah man but, all right well, all right then later have guys. a good one have a great one if you enjoyed watching or want to support the channel, remember to attack that like button. Subscribe on YouTube, follow on Twitch, or join our Discord using the link on screen or in the description below so that you can get daily updates on all of our uploads and live streams. We know we're not perfect and we can always improve, so please visit our Discord or comment below with a critique or a compliment to let us know how we can improve ourselves. Finally, if you're just starting for more content, you can become an honorary member of 3D Productions at patreon.com slash 3D and get a exclusive access for as low as a dollar a month.